A new police officer was sworn in during the Tuesday evening Caravel Mayor and Alderman meeting. Police Chief Stephanie Smith recommended to the board that it approve the hiring of Brian Keaton as a full-time police officer at $11 an hour. Keaton has been working as a temporary officer for Caravel since Officer John Bruce resigned. It was unanimous that Keaton be hired full-time. The first reading on an ordinance regulating where microbearers, distilleries, and wineries can be located within the town was also read. The ordinance restricts these businesses to zones M2 and M3, which are industrial areas, according to Vice Mayor Glenn Smith, who is also on the Planning Commission. That came down from the state that we had to allow these business in at all. The only thing that we have control of is where to put them and so we put them in the industrial park, agreed Mayor Chris Stanley. Approval was also given by the board for the fire department to use funds left over after the purchase of a new fire truck to outfit the truck with tires and other equipment. The truck cost $16,049. It's a 2006 Ford F-350 extended cab four-wheel drive truck. There had been $20,000 in the budget for the purchase of the truck, leaving nearly $4,000 left over to equip it. The purchase of rear tires for the street department's backhoe at a cost of $1,052 from Dole's Tires was also approved, as was the application for a FEMA grant for the fire department. It's a grant the department applies for each year and, if received, would be used on equipment. Glenn Smith reported to the board that a new travel center would be breaking ground at the 141 exit in the next two to four weeks, depending upon the weather and the Tennessee Department of Transportation. Final plat approval will be in December and January, and at that point, we will announce what the Travel Center's name is, Glenn Smith said. Other business discussed and voted on was the approval to put two items out to bid. The first item out to bid is the repair of three doors at City Hall. The doors need new locks and new weather stripping, according to Glenn Smith, who asked to have the item placed on the agenda. It was also agreed to place the repair and replacement of the front section of the fence at Asbury Park on the agenda as well. The section that needs repaired is about 60 feet, while the entire front section is around 500 feet. Board members Mark Stanley recommended replacing the entire front section for safety purposes. We have needed to move the fence back anyway to keep people from hitting it, which is what happened with the one section, so why not do it all at once and have it done, Mark Stanley said. The cost to repair the 60-foot section is estimated at around $570. The person who tore the fence down in an auto accident will pay for that cost. The estimated cost to replace the entire 500-foot front section is anywhere from $5,700 to $7,100, according to figures Mark Stanley collected. The board voted to send it out for bid to discuss at the next meeting. The purchase of 300 gallons of off-road fuel for street department off-road equipment was also approved. The diesel fuel cost $325 a gallon and will cost a total of $975. The fuel will be used for tractors and backhoes and other off-road machinery. During the meeting, board member Vicki Heatherly 
brought up the topic of a rainy day fund and setting aside money in case of an emergency. Be reminded the board that the town had a rainy day fund with $60,000 in it that had been used and not replace the funds. Glenn Smith said he would like to wait till January when revenues were down in order to get a better idea of how much needed to be in the fund. Mayor Chris Stanley agreed. Mark Stanley gave his opinion on the matter, saying he thought instead of putting money in a rainy day fund, they should use it to pay off some bills that were garnering interest. Heatherly said she did not see why the town could not do both and asked if it could be put on the agenda to discuss once again in January. The board voted its approval. Board member Lisa Crawford reported to the board the trunk or treat which was held over by Scotty's went very well with about 300 children in attendance of the event. I think it went great for a first time event and we hope for it to grow, agreed the mayor. After the mayor and alderman meeting was over, a beer board meeting was called to order. It was a short meeting with only one beer permit issued for the due drop-in, which is located at 375 John McGee Boulevard. Campbell County High School JROTC student Aubrey Nash was awarded the Legion of Valor Cross for achievement during the meeting of the Campbell County Board of Education meeting last night. One of only 25 such awards granted among over 330,000 high school ROTC cadets and 12th in the past 13 years to receive the Legion of Valor underscoring the fact that Campbell County High has one of the best junior ROTC programs in the country. That fact was emphasized by retired General Carl W. Steiner, who presented the award to Cadet Nash at the meeting. The award is based upon military and academic scholarship and grades, leadership, discipline, and character. The award presentation was a surprise to Miss Nash, who was asked to attend the board meeting to make a presentation on a JROTC program to the board. JROTC instructor Colonel Salveson said. Instead, she was invited to the front to receive the coveted honor while her family looked proudly on. The remainder of the board meeting was routine business. Chairman Rector Miller at one point asked Finance Director Jeff Marlowe to explain one budget amendment involving over $390,000 technology upgrades. Marlowe explained that the amendment covers a transfer of grant money from the state to cover the cost of computers needed to handle new testing requirements due to begin this year. Faye Homer was asked to explain how gate receipts from football games were distributed. Comer explained that 90% of all receipts to into the football program with the other 10% transferred to the general athletic fund. The county sold 1,540 tickets to the first round of the state playoff game with Gibbs last week, taking in over $9,000. The total also included $750 received because the game was televised on cable channel MyVLT. Of that amount, $5,775 was turned over to the TSSAA, while Campbell County retained 3,267, Comer reported. Attorney Dale Cantrell gave notice to the board about new state laws 
that will require board action to revise and update policies on bullying. Local boards can now be held liable if bullying occurs and the school system does not have programs in effect to prevent bullying and to train personnel on how to deal with bullying. In the past, schools could only be held liable if school officials were made aware of specific bullying instances and failed to take action. Cantrell said he also pointed out that the school systems must soon close the performance gap between test scores for the highest performing students and children with special needs and those considered socially and economically disadvantaged. Eugene Lawson pointed out that in some Campbell County schools where nearly all students qualify for free or reduced price lunches, practically all students would be considered socially or economically disadvantaged. Lawson then launched a campaign about what he referred to as cruisers, students who show up at school with tattoos, face piercing, and saggy pants, and aren't interested in learning. There's no possible way to bring test scores up for those students. I guess we need to bring test scores down for the better students, Lawson quipped. And we have some times and places for community dinners coming up this month. On Saturday, November 16th from 3 to 6 p.m., the La Follette Church of God will be serving dinner. On Friday, November 22nd, La Follette United Methodist Church from 5 to 6.30 p.m. And then on Saturday, November 23rd from 5 to 7 p.m., at the Indian Mound Baptist Church, they will host the dinner. The reservations are made at 912-3709. That phone number again, 912-3709. And that's the news today. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back and take a look at the press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. Nine people have been booked into the Campbell County Jail in the past 24 hours. Nathan Roy Henderson, 33, of Loop Road in Newcomb, on an attachment for child support. 39-year-old Alan John Hunley of Speedwell for DUI, violation of the Tennessee financial law and violation of the registration law. James B. Lawson, 46, of Back Valley Road, La Folly, for violation of probation. 23-year-old Kelly Marie Martin of Jacksboro for DUI. Michael Ray Shoemaker, 48, of Hiawassee Drive in Jacksboro, domestic assault, a capious, aggravated burglary, and domestic violence by assault. 30-year-old Shane Kelly Shoup of Ridner Lane, La Follette, for theft of property between 500 and and $999. Charles Z. Slagle, 21, of Jellicoe, for domestic assault. 29-year-old Raymond Matthew Teague, of Jones Trailer Lane, La Follette, for violation of probation. And last today, Heather R. Webb, 22, of Park Road in Caraville, entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. And that's a look at the news for this Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow, and we hope you'll be back with us. Hey, Big Josh with you, looking at our birthdays and anniversaries on this Wednesday evening. And our birthday and anniversary club is brought to you by your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli. They're located in the Food Line Center. Make sure you stop by and tell them, hey, tell them you heard about them right here at WLAF. And today, Daniel England turns 29 years old. Don't seem possible, Daniel. Happy 29th birthday to you, sir. Yesterday, Danny Oreck turned 50. Happy belated birthday, Danny. And uh, Dylan West turned 19 years old yesterday. Happy uh, number 19 to you, Dylan. We hope all of you had a great day and are having a great day. Now listen, 
If you're celebrating your birthday or your anniversary, and for some reason we don't have your name on our list, it's really important that you get that in here because that's the only way that you can qualify to be in the drawing that we have each Friday. And you could win a birthday dinner for two or an anniversary dinner for two from your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli located in the Food Line Center. Hey, good Lord willing, see you tomorrow.